Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Sophia Erber. Lawmakers tonight say the process of voting during a pandemic can, of course, be difficult for seniors, but many of them are still heading to the polls this year. KCAU 9 Washington correspondent Basil John reports on how they can cast their ballots safely in our top story at 5. With Election Day just a few days away, lawmakers want seniors to cast their votes safely. And we've got to make sure we're taking every step possible to allow them to vote as they have in, in so many elections. Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey says state election officials have been working hard to accommodate senior voters. Make sure this process runs smoothly and make sure that seniors can, uh, can vote uh, in person if they want. Uh, or, or uh, getting their, their ballots in. Pennsylvania Congressman Fred Keller says seniors should not be afraid to vote in person. Going to vote at the polling place is no more dangerous than going to the grocery store or any other place. I would just say take the same precautions. Keller says in his home state, many voters, including seniors, have applied for absentee ballots. Applying for a ballot, having it mailed to you, completing it and sending it back properly to the elections offices across our Commonwealth. Uh, people have been doing it for a very long period of time. The presidential candidates have made clear that Pennsylvania is a hotly contested state with their constant campaign visits. And Casey says the senior population will play a big role in the results. I have no doubt that seniors across the board will vote and will, will follow the procedures because they know what is at stake in this election. Casey says any seniors who cannot drop off their ballots should ask someone they trust to do it for them. In Washington, Basil John, KCAU 9 News. Less than one week away now from Election Day, Joni Ernst fighting to keep one of Iowa's two Senate seats. The RV tour began in Sioux City this morning alongside Governor Kim Reynolds, Senator Chuck Grassley, State Senator Jim Carlin, and Senator Ted Cruz. The room filled with Siouxlanders backing Ernst for re-election. A family member of Joni's was present today and stood up to address what she called misconceptions in some political ads that were targeting Ernst. So, but thanks to those that are early voting, but those that want to go to the polls, we're going to have a beautiful day on Tuesday. So make sure you're getting out and making sure that your vote counts. And today, her opponent, Teresa Greenfield, toured a Marion County farm as part of her Jobs That Need to Get Done tour across the state of Iowa. Presidential candidate Joe Biden making a stop in Iowa this afternoon. The Democrat holding a drive-in campaign style event at the state fairgrounds in Des Moines. While Iowa is now a must win for Biden, most polls do show that it's a close race between him and President Trump. And there's a loss for Trump would complicate his path to re-election. And I believe when you use your power, the power of a vote, we're going to change the course of the country and quite frankly the world. Right here and I, with all of you, in the final days, please keep your sense of empowerment. Meanwhile, President Trump also stumping in the Midwest ahead of the election. While in Michigan earlier today, he took the chance to talk up strong car sales. The president also pointing out economic growth across the nation, citing how the GDP grew at a record pace of 33.1% in the last quarter. GDP went up to 33.1, right? And it was hardly mentioned. It's amazing. And a friend of mine, very smart, said to me, oh, they won't talk about it. It's never been done before, right? They won't talk about it because they don't want you to win. Because they're sick and they're corrupt. They don't want you to win. And back here in Siouxland, as the holiday season is quickly approaching, nonprofit organizations are gearing up tonight to help an influx of people in need. The Community Action Agency of Siouxland says they have helped with food and personal items for 2,000 people since the pandemic. Another organization, Food Bank of Siouxland, says they have had a more than 70% increase of people in need of food assistance just in recent months. With Thanksgiving and Christmas, nonprofits are now turning to the community to help them prepare. Purchasing more food, um, making sure that we have more boxes packed uh, as we've moved to the low contact, no contact model of, of placing pre-prepared food boxes into the trunks of people's cars. We do give away a lot of coats, hats, mittens. Those things are always important for children to have. So uh, really, you could name your passion and meet a need in the community. And Both organizations say they are always looking for volunteers.
And it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, another day that we were treated to sunshine, mostly across Siouxland. That's right, Sophie. Sunny skies all day long here throughout much of the area. And temperatures a little bit warmer as well in the lower 50s outside. So not too bad of a day here throughout Siouxland. Reaching up to 52 in Sioux City and Lamar's today. 50 in Orange City as well as Spencer. Reaching up to 51 in Cherokee, a little bit warmer as you head south and west. Wayne at 56 for your recorded high and 61 in Norfolk. The opposite there in Storm Lake as temperatures were a little bit cooler at 48 today. Forecast lows tonight, they'll drop down into the mid to upper 30s for most of us. So a cool night, but not a freezing cold night here throughout Siouxland tonight. Tomorrow looks to be very pleasant for this time of year. Next week, we're going to see above average temperatures. Details on all of that in the 9 on 9. Sophie? Thanks, Marcus. Taking a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Woodbury County Health officials tonight reporting the county's 99th virus-related death. This as 93 new cases are being confirmed. Woodbury County now totaling more than 7,400 positives. In Nebraska, Dakota County reports just two additional virus-related deaths along with nine new cases. The county tallies more than 2,600 total positives during the pandemic. And in South Dakota, Lincoln County reports 121 new cases. The county totals more than 2,900 positives. And as COVID-19 cases stay on the rise, how are Iowans feeling about going out to watch sports? To find out, KCAU 9 is partnering with our sister station, WHO, in Des Moines for Nexstar's Iowa 2nd Red America, Blue America, or RABA research poll. So tonight's poll results show that nearly 70% of Iowans are staying off the bleachers because of the pandemic. Now, just under a quarter of those people polled felt comfortable attending games. The remaining 8% say they were unsure. Taking a closer look now, both men and women are largely uncomfortable with the idea, but women are more likely to forego kickoff by about five points. But men are comfortable attending games more than women by a margin of 9%. New numbers show Nebraska saw a record number of cases of coronavirus confirmed in one day, as well as a record number of people hospitalized with the virus. The state's online virus tracker showing more than 1,600 new cases were confirmed on Thursday. That's the most in one day since more than 1,200 cases were confirmed two weeks ago. The site also showing 528 people with the virus hospitalized on Thursday of this week, well over the previous day's record of 483. The state's rate of new cases also jumping now officially seventh highest in the nation. And back here in Iowa, Harrison County officials are now implementing a mask mandate. That mandate approved in a two to one vote. The regulation coming as the county's positivity rate for COVID-19 topped the 20% mark for three straight weeks. Health officials there say outbreaks in elder care facilities are a driving factor in the growing case numbers. With many schools having transition now to online learning, it is important to talk with your children about cyberbullying. With more, here's ABC News' Elizabeth Schulze. Cyberbullying can take place across digital devices like cell phones, laptops, and tablets, and can cause children anxiety, depression, poor academic performance, and impaired physical health. Through various social media platforms, text messages, apps, or email, harmful and cruel content can be long-lasting, wide-ranging, and hard to notice. To protect against cyberbullying, have a conversation with your children about what content they post online. Experts recommend that children should not share information that they wouldn't feel comfortable sharing with their family, as digital privacy is limited and content can stay on the internet permanently. Many children do not disclose cyberbullying because they fear losing privileges to their devices. If any child says that he or she is being cyberbullied, experts recommend that parents acknowledge those emotions and sympathetically listen. Experts also recommend parents become involved in their child's internet use from an early age by teaching proper internet etiquette. Setting clear guidelines and expectations can help parents mitigate the spread of cyberbullying. With this Medical Minute, I'm Elizabeth Schulze. Having a baby comes with its share of joys and also challenges. And for one mom, those challenges made for an unusual delivery. How she battled the weather to have her child coming up. And it's looking like we're going to have a very pleasant Halloween for tomorrow. 60s and 70s for highs next week, and it looks like the dry pattern continues. More details after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. This is KCAU 9 Weather. 
thanks for sticking with us. And it was nice to see the sun today, Marcus, mm -hmm. but we're still not where we should be right. temperature-wise. This isn't normal. Right. We're still a little bit below average, even though most of us did reach up into the lower 50s today. That's still a little bit below where we should be. Typically, we would have our high temperatures in the upper 50s for this time of year. So we're getting closer, but still not quite there yet. The view outside from the KCAU 9 studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company showing that, again, we are seeing those sunny skies out there. The last bit of sunlight here before it goes down in the next few hours. And it does look like tonight we are going to continue to see clear skies here throughout Siouxland. We're going to have those temperatures in the low to mid 70s. We might even hit upper 70s for next Saturday. And then the following week, that's when we're going to have those cooler temperatures move back in. You know, I thought about driving up to Okaboji for one last time at the lake this Saturday. I yeah. might wait till it's 77 degrees. It might be a great weekend for it. Pretty cool. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot, Marcus. Well, daylight savings time does come to an end this Sunday, meaning those clocks will be moved back by one hour. Don't forget on Halloween night, late on Halloween night, it's also a good time for people to take a little extra time around their home, do some extra maintenance. That includes changing out the batteries and smoke detectors and maybe putting in some new fur furnace filters. You can find more tips to keep your home safe in this digital exclusive story right now. Post it on our website. The address there on your screen, SiouxlandProud.com, or check out the free KCAU 9 News app. Well, he was lucky enough to win the lottery, but after that, this man's luck seemed to run out. We'll explain why coming up. And for many parents, a child's delivery is a memorable moment. A story of what this mother calls her ice storm baby. Next. An Oklahoma City mother gave birth to a healthy baby boy, but in her living room without electricity in the middle of an ice storm. Peter Yeager has this incredible story. Being a mom is life-changing already. Day one in. Meet Ari. Eight pounds, five ounces, less than 36 hours old, and already the story of a lifetime. It was a make-it-work moment. <laughs> The Espinosas riding out the ice storm of the century, relying on candles when Morgan's contractions became unbearable a week before her due date. I was so cold, I was shivering. It's called labor for a reason, so. The inside temperature, 48 degrees. No power, no heat, no pain meds. Deciding the living room will have to do. I was trying to massage her back and squeeze her hips, and then when she was taking a break, I was just running out there and just loading as big as fire as I could get. Chris stacking firewood for warmth and neighbors lending power from their generator, boiling water in a coffee pot for warm washcloths. It was a lot of answer to prayer and we are in love. 12 hours later, the couple, first time parents. I'm so proud of her. I, I could not have done that. The family of three still waiting for their electricity to come back on. But now, with new company. I would do a, a home birth again with power. An amazing story. Well, winning the lottery might instill a sense of urgency in some people. But why one man regrets rolling the dice on the extension to collect his winnings coming up next. What would you do if you won the lottery? While some people might have a detailed plan on what to do once they get the money, a Colorado man found out it's equally important to actually collect the winnings first. Shell Turner explains. I'm not a regular player. I know. Peter Bailey had big dreams when he played the Powerball last spring. My wife and I would do some traveling. <laughs> While he didn't win millions. Uh, lo and behold, it was a $1,500 winner. The state mandates that winning tickets must be turned in within six months. A pandemic extension allowed anyone who bought a ticket between the 6th and 30th of April to receive an extra 30 days to claim their winnings. But Peter didn't turn in his ticket. Well, I guess I could have used certified mail, but um, I just didn't feel comfortable at the time so he waited and missed the deadline by just three days it's you know it's totally on me it was my mistake i thought maybe an extension of a couple three days would be you know would be something that they could live with but that's not how it works with the state lottery it's really important that we keep to the rules otherwise you know everybody would 
you know, everybody would want to potentially change the rules. State Lottery spokesperson Megan Doherty tells the problem solvers rules for playing the game are clearly stated on the program's website. We want them to have those prizes and get that money. She adds sending in your ticket by certified mail is a secure option. It's, we actually had a $100,000 ticket winner who mailed it in to us. Proceeds, including unclaimed winnings, support Great Outdoors Colorado, the Conservation Trust Fund, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, and the Colorado Department of Education. Peter says he feels good about that, but has this advice for anyone else who picks winning numbers. Go ahead, call, email, make an appointment, and get that money in your hands as soon as possible so you don't end up like this. Taking a live look outside right now, Marcus returns with another check on our forecast through the weekend. Coming up next, stay with us. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. He's in the newsroom for us. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon. Good to be back with you, Sophie. It is pretty safe to say that the holiday season certainly is going to be a little bit different uh, in terms of the level of need across the community this year. At 6, KCA Unite reporter Brina Bach checks in with Siouxland nonprofits to learn how they're approaching the new challenges and how Siouxland folks can still help and a step up to help uh, fellow Siouxlanders. Also at 6, Hannah Adamson reports live from Scarecrow Farm over in Lawton. Dozens of folks there today making their way out for a uh, hay rack ride, perhaps a walk through the corn maze and other Halloween activities, all leading up to a beggar's night, which is, of course, just around the corner. And our latest uh, Red America, Blue America polling results are in. We'll take a look at COVID-19 and how that relates to large sporting events, how folks feel. That's at 6 as well. All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. And I've been to Scarecrow Farms. Those apple cider donuts mm -hmm. are killer. And a great weekend to get outside. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be pretty nice tonight. A little cool in the mid-30s, but above freezing for most of us. We are going to have clear skies out there tomorrow. A warmer day for Halloween. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s with more sunshine. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend, or I'll see you back here at 6. Good night.